our first entrepreneur into the den is the self-assured Stephen Reynolds. Uh, I'm excited, uh, quite happy with with the information that I have and the position that the business is in, so I'm feeling quite confident. And there's one dragon he's got his eye on. Uh, of course, I do quite like Peter because he, he's been the longest serving dragon and um, he's, he's made some good investments in the past, but he's also missed a few opportunities as well and hopefully this won't be one that he passes up on. My name is Stephen Reynolds and I'm the Managing Director of Micro Fitness. Today I'm looking for £100,000 for 15% equity. It can be argued that the best businesses are those that benefit society. Perhaps one that can tackle a £15.8 billion problem in the UK or one that costs the NHS £4.2 billion each year. The problem is obesity, particularly childhood obesity yet we have no single market leader in this industry. Micro Fitness is a multi-award winning fitness company for children. We deliver 21 different fitness experiences designed for ages 3 plus and offer our services to over 400 schools, organisations, special needs groups and councils across Scotland, ultimately seeking to become the world's leading fitness company for children. Some of these experiences include the mobile gym, Scooter Fitness in Zorbin, as well as more traditional ones like yoga, Zumba and martial arts. This year we have enjoyed exceptional growth across a number of markets. Just now we're on track for over 200,000 of sales. And one market in particular that's rapidly growing are our council contracts, where they bring us into their sports centres to organise events on a regular basis. In this market alone, we anticipate sales growing exponentially in the next 12 months and we need your investment today in order to manage this. Your investment will go towards four key areas. The first is for a second office space in Manchester to establish a foothold in England. The second is more vans and equipment. The third is staff and the fourth is advertising and marketing. So if you're looking for a low risk investment that tackles one of the most major health epidemics of our time, then I would love to welcome you on board. Thanks for listening. I would like to invite anyone up to either try our Zorbin or Archery. Absolutely. Can we get Tuka in the Zorb? No, I want to get in the Zorb. Hoping to persuade the dragons to exercise their financial muscle. Deborah, Sarah, some archery perhaps? Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. I've never mm. done archery. Is Stephen Reynolds from Stirling. This is your chance to shoot Peter without any explanation. He's asking for £100,000 in return for a 15% stake. <laughs> in his kid-friendly mobile fitness company. Boys, don't break Nick. Oh, Do no. not break Nick. Oh, Is that you're, you're, you're not... What's happened here? You're right there, Nick. That's like an anti-birthing chamber. I've been reborn. <laughs> Sarah Willingham's on target. Oh, I nailed that. Quite good, isn't it? But will Stephen score a bullseye with his investment opportunity? A lot of fun. Deborah Meaden gets the ball rolling. So, Stephen, um, you've got 400 schools and organisations. Yep. Um, are you making any money? Yeah, it's been profitable since the first year. Three years ago, our turnover was at 81,000 and we had a net of 39. The year after that, I went up to 112,000 and a 21 net. Uh, the year after that, I had to make some structural changes in the company and uh, we took a little hit in that. Uh, but thanks to those changes, we're now reaping the rewards for over 200,000 this year, as I say, uh, with 125 gross and a 45 net. So let's, talk, let's look into the future then. What does that look like going forward? Going forward next year, we're anticipating 720,000 um, with a gross of 330 and a net of 125. The year after that, we are looking at 1.2 million with a 550 gross and a 260 net. The fitness entrepreneur is forecasting healthy profits. But Stephen's prediction of a leap in turnover of half a million pounds next year is going to take some justifying to Peter Jones. Stephen, you've got a huge jump, haven't you? Which is, which is always typical when somebody comes in and pitches. Um, they're never going to be realistic and give a realistic figure. They're going to give a figure that's almost I would, unbelievable. I would stop you right there, actually, Peter. These figures are realistic, and I'll happily go on to explain that. 
We don't just operate in schools or local authorities. We operate in multiple markets successfully. But what are you going to go from 200,000 of sales to what? Uh, to 720. Amazing. Yeah, I would be disappointed if that's all we hit, if I'm being honest with you. I'm and expecting... do you believe pigs fly? Sorry? Um, they do in my world. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have, no, I have no doubt. Um, simply because of I've spent five years um, learning and making wrong moves. And now I have what I believe is the perfect business model moving forward. Now, what we need today is investment to buy more equipment in vans and an office base. But most importantly... But, Stephen, it's got to be a lot better than that. Because you are currently turning over... There's a technical term, I'm going to call it diddly squat. And yeah. you don't have the run rate to support £800,000 worth of forecasted sales. How so? You were forecasting to do 200,000. Yeah. Where's your 800,000 run rate? Um, might have missed it. It's the pending contracts that I'm talking about with the local authorities. So what contracts have you won that's going to change? Yeah. I'll show them. So what have I got here? The first two contracts that you see there are the signed ones from South Lanarkshire and North Ayrshire. The ones behind it are the ones that are pending. If we land Glasgow successfully, we're looking at half a million pounds a year with that single customer and a single market, bearing in mind we operate in multiple markets. Right. Stephen, you have no proven business model whatsoever. You've just got an agreement which you've agreed to trial. If it doesn't work, you'll have a calling off period and nothing will happen going after it. You have no proof. This actually doesn't give you any validation of your business. Well, we've got the sales for it. I mean, we started... You haven't, because you haven't done anything with you're it. You're not looking at the sales, you're looking at a contract. The sales started in February with a pilot programme at Broadwood Stadium and North Lanarkshire Council. Uh, no, but not these two contracts. Yeah, I'll go through the story if you want to know the answers. Well, no, it'd be really important, because at the moment, I'm seeing a contract that's only just signed. Yeah. When you went to the back, you were showing me and proving to me why your business has delivered and going to deliver 800,000. Yeah. I need to know why this will prove that to me. Because we have just formalised our setup. So we went back to the councils and said, we need this agreement signed, and that's why they've just been signed. So how much business have you done with South Lanarkshire Leisure? With South Lanarkshire Leisure, they have just started. They're starting at the end of June, the start of July, their first events are. So you haven't done anything with that one? The tickets are on sale just now. Have you done anything with that one? There's a yes or no answer? Yes. So what business have you done with this? Around £4,000 of ticket sales pending for events that are about to come. Contract two with North Ayrshire. What have you done with them? Um, we're two and a half with them. Two and a half with them. Fulkirk Community Trust, how much business have you done with them and how much money have you taken? Um, we're sitting at around six and a half with them. OK, so that everything I have in this file, which you gave me, to demonstrate and to prove that you have a business that's going to go from 165000 to 800000 you've shown me the contracts that you've signed are giving you £13,000. In total, it's £35,000 with, with North Lanarkshire. Where's, where's the half a million pounds contract that you alluded to? That's, that's based on solely the Glasgow one that we're about to sign. And that's the, the one at the back? Yeah, the pending contracts. OK, so it's one at the back that actually doesn't say anything, but it's just got a yeah. photocopy of their to logo. Yeah, to represent what's about to be signed, Jeff. Yeah. It's just like that? Yes. Mm. Stephen, do you know what? I'm not going to be very long. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> OK. Um, Sorry to I think I think you've just demonstrated to me that you're not going to go from 200 to 800,000. Anybody can do this. Uh, I don't think you have something particularly unique. You've only just signed the contracts, so I'm not even going to waste my breath or my time. I'm out. OK, thanks for your input, Peter. He was the dragon Stephen saw as his ideal investor. But an irritated Peter Jones swiftly exits the negotiations. Does the business proposition make financial sense to e-commerce mogul Nick Jenkins? Can, can I talk to you about cash flow? Because inherently, the cash flow in this is quite good. You're getting paid in advance, effectively, for these things, aren't you? We're doing it 10 days after the event. OK, 10 days after, but you're paying about 30 days after to the council. Correct. And then your staff, you're probably not paying it on the day. Yeah, end of the month. So you talked about a second office in Manchester. Scratch that, you don't need it. You talked about buying vans. Scratch that. This year, rent them. You talked about staff. Well, you hire those and pay those on a daily basis. That's no cash flow issue. Deliver on these, get your £750,000 worth of turnover, and then you won't need to raise any money. Um, and for that reason, I'm out. 
personal kit. Thanks for your input. Another blow for Stephen as Nick Jenkins offers advice but declines to invest. Will Tuka Suleiman or Sarah Willingham be more prepared to part with their cash? Stephen, um, I believe this is not an investment for me because I think it's too small. I think a lot of it is based on crystal ball. And I, you know, I think it's a good little business you're running, but I'm not going to invest. OK, I appreciate your time. Thank I'm you. out. Stephen, um, you've got a lot of pending stuff there. If you can prove that, you've proven the business model, it's been going for six to 12 months. You know, you can be you can ask me for money for a lot higher valuation once that's proven and you've got that revenue model set. So I'm not going to invest, but I, I, I hope you get there because I think it's a great thing for kids. I really do. Um, so good luck, but I'm afraid I'm out. Four dragons down, and after a pitch with some tetchy exchanges, it's time for a bit of straight talking from Deborah Meaden. You probably don't know, but you do come across as a little bit spiky when you're talking to investors. You know, engage with them, don't push against them. You know, because you've got five people here looking to put money into businesses. Anyway, um, expansion for you right now outside of Scotland is the wrong thing to do. Consolidate. Get these landed. OK. Do that first before you do any more, please. <laughs> OK, Deborah, thanks again for that. For me, your, your, your whole expansion plan is just too early. So for that reason, I'm afraid I'm out. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. So Deborah Meaden blows the final whistle on Stephen's investment hopes. He leaves the den bruised, but ready to fight another day. Didn't go as expected. Um, it was pretty rough, pretty rough. I always think it's an interesting strategy to try and pit yourself against the dragons as opposed to engage it. I think uh, Peter took a rather aggressive approach to analysing the business. And uh, unfortunately, the, the other dragons ended up picking up on the negativity that I think I was ultimately emitting by the end of it. 